10 23 10 we were talking about Napoleon Kaufman a moment ago about maybe not taking advantage of the openings here you go Chuck well these plays are obviously designed to hit the point of attack if Napoleon Kaufman keeps coming and hits it during the time he's got some room to ramble straight ahead obviously incredible talent shown to get what he got with the choice that he made my argument isn't with the run it's with the choice third down in five clock down to eight seconds you saw the checkoff Kaufman stops looks has the first down boy he does scare you when he stops like that to look at the line well when he gets outside he can certainly make good things happen Mike Booth awfully Darryl quick. miles on the stop he gets to the outside very quickly <laughs> and you know I mean I hate to be too critical but again you know, his first first move he runs in the pile a little bit he certainly gets a first down it's hard to argue it's like we were with coach John James last week you don't argue with the results you just exactly. sometimes wish you go where you want him to go exactly on first and 10 Kaufman again inside the, tw the 25 to the 23 yard line Michael Davis again making the tackle Davis out of nearby St. Mary and Napoleon from Lompoc nearby Lompoc one of the great things about this game and about this blooming rivalry is the fact that so many of the Husky players are from the state of California Napoleon Kaufman among them they played high school football against a lot of these California Bears second down and seven Krolik wide to the left side he's going to Krolik no Ooh, interference right there unless the yes there's the flag Bruner the intended receiver and Josh Gamore ran right up the back of him Probably one time you're glad that you don't have more speed than the other guy. <laughs> if Mark Bruner runs away from Josh Moore. Left side. Ball thrown, tight end, one on one with the safety. Tripped him right up. There you get the feet tangled up and not much you can do. On the defense. Big play for the Huskies, though, big break. So it will be, boy, the ball's right on the 10 yard line. Tough situation for Washington here again yeah. right at the 10 no first down possible it's first and goal right you are Frolic wide to the right side with McCarthy to the left Napoleon on the toss sweep and the toss oh, oh my goodness what a great idea a great idea as Kaufman with a hot the really the halfback pass. <laughs> that, that pass was half something. Great play call. Napoleon Kaufman, such a threat. You're not even going to think about him throwing. He thinks he's Bob Waterfield for crying out loud. Joe Krolik all alone. Can you imagine what Gilby's thinking a after that? Why didn't I think of that? A simple shot put pass gets it done. Second and ten. Opportunity gone by. To Ron Hill to the right side. Kaufman again. Lucky to get maybe one. Oh, that was an opportunity. Boy, you think of that touchdown on the punt return that was called back. That play so close so many times. Dante DiPaolo on the stop of Kaufman. Gigantino's defense has done well to hold this Husky offense to 10 points. Well, you certainly don't expect Napoleon Kaufman to be able to throw the ball like a quarterback. But oh, if he could only throw it. <laughs> 15 yards in the air and just throw it he had a good vertical leap though a lot of time for Heward incomplete Janowski intended the receiver and Ike Booth defending its fourth down now what do you do Sam Bright has yet to send the field goal team on the field they're going to go for it 13 minutes goal. to go if you kick the field goal here it takes it to 23 to 13. 13 which means you still need two scores says if I need two scores I'm going to try to get one of them right now I'm not so sure I wouldn't go for the field goal anyway cut it down to 10 you cut it to 10 and you're in a field goal touchdown situation turns one of those two scores into a field goal right here you still got two touchdowns left fourth down. Not even close. Ernie Conwell, the intended receiver. 
Artis Houston defending. One positive thing certainly played into the decision for Jim Lambright is field position. His defense starting to play well. He knows if I don't get this touchdown, Cal has the ball on its own 10. But you have a chance to make a play to the tight end from the 10 yard line. Ernie, Ernie Conwell, yeah. Looking for the flag. Could have been thrown, but that would have been very gutsy. May have been why it wasn't so close as I had pointed out earlier. All right, first and 10 for California. Clock, a big ally for the Bears. 13.09 remaining, fourth quarter. And the Huskies have got to turn it up about three notches now. And look out. That's what happens when you start stunning people. First down, California for Rutherford. Lamar Lyons, the free safety, making the stop. And if, Gilby knows that, doesn't he? Well, Gilby knows that this is a big play defense, both in terms of the plays that they make and the plays that they give up. Husky fans have seen a lot of long runs against an aggressive Husky defense. Steve Springstead, instead of stepping up into the hole and taking on Marty Holly, tries to dodge him to the outside. Rutherford reads it, goes up inside. This Husky defense last year gave up 22 touchdowns, 10 of them were 40 year 40 yards or longer. It's a defense that is susceptible to the big play. And this time Jamal Fontaine has the big play defensively for the Huskies. Rutherford wrapped up. Check it. It's Tyrone Edwards. There's the half of the glass that is half full. Yes. When you're sending people you're going to make some of your own. The double edged sword. You live by it and die by it. 1220 the clock killing a lot of Husky hopes right now. The advantage for Cal in getting the ball on their own 10 yard line as opposed to the 50 is there's 40 more yards of clock yes. that they can run off should they sustain a good drive. Good point. Edwards again trying to cut back with the pursuit fumble. Russell Hairston says it's the Huskies. Let's wait and see. You talk about opportunities not taken advantage of the punt return the halfback pass misplayed by Napoleon Kaufman two Huskies Cal football don't get on this football and Gilby's bulletproof vest is taking some <laughs> shots it is you see Stussy gets in the way right there a nice play from behind by Russell Hairston the ball laying on the ground right there Jamal Fontaine had his opportunity. Steve Springstead did a nice job of popping it out of Edwards arms. Third down and 11. Shotgun formation and trips to the right side. Here comes everybody. First down what a pass by Barr. Let's wait and see but it's very close to the first down. As a ways a ways okay makes the reception. First down. Well, Wazer K does a great job of knowing just how far he has to go. Resi Reeser cannot close the gap soon enough to make the play. Again, lots of Huskies rushing. Good protection. Barr puts the ball outside where it needs to be, and Reggie Reeser just doesn't get there in time. That's a huge play. Third and 11, and they convert deep yeah. in their own end. First and 10. They give it to Holly. Uh, the fullback who has been a mighty busy man today Trevor Highfield on the tackle. Well, what that first down does is give them basically two more minutes of clock to run off. 11 yeah. 05 11 04 three. Gilby's thinking and he's, <laughs> he said this week says beating the Huskies is like you know taking on the Yankees. This is the big one. This is the Yankees man. This is credibility. You know you, you beat a team that won a national championship just two years ago. That's that's a statement. Second down and eight. Bar, look out. Devers, Demetrius Devers on the blitz. And he nails that's sack number two, I believe, for the Huskies today. And number two on the year for Demetrius Devers. Dave Barr, all he could do is laugh. He had no decision to make there. You see Demetrius Devers lined up down low, just stunts down inside Brian Thur, who's got one eye on Andy Mason. Says, do I take 13 or 43? I'm just going to stand here in the middle and hope one of them runs into me. Demetrius Devers runs into Dave Barr. Brian Thurry has gotten quite an education today. 
third and 17. Dimitri is getting more and more playing time. Holly again, and things are jammed up well by the dogs inside. Steve Springstead in there initially. And it'll be fourth down. Clock still running. Good job by the Husky defense of taking advantage of the sack on second down. The sack on second down doesn't do you any good if you give up the play on third down. You've got to continue to get off the series, get off the field. Huskies with all three timeouts, Chuck, and only one for California. Longwell back. Boy, a big punt return would be mighty timely right now. Bino Bryant, low punt. He'll have a chance to do something with it. Coming up the near sideline. Oh, almost got by the initial wave, and a flag goes down on this side of the field. For the block in the back. I could see it coming. I didn't know if Dave Janoski was going to pull off or not. I believe it was Dave Janoski. The temptation was too strong and it was too close. Block in the back against the return team. Penalty enforced in the end of the run. First down. Television timeout. We're seeing so many mistakes that you cannot make and be a consistent winner today. Things we've not seen in a Husky program in a long time. We'll be back. There's your score here in the fourth quarter with 916 remaining. I'm Don Poyer along with Chuck Nelson. Chuck you down there. We need some field goals here. You, you brought them back one time for the win. We need five of them. Yeah well <laughs> you got a lot of leg left in you. First and ten. Husky on the 34 yard line. Time to go upstairs now. They got to move. Frolic is open. Flag no. No flag. Amazing. They started to reach for it. The he side sure judge. Put that hand in the pocket for a minute. Ike Booth making up some ground on Joe Krolik. Right here, you see Ike with that right side riding Joe Krolik down Jeez, a little bit. Gee, he's not only grabbing him, he's face guarding him. He's got one arm on Joe, one arm up by the ball. Krolik had him beat. This ball thrown a little bit farther, and it's a completion. Can't see anything on that replay. Second down and 10. 9 10 remaining. Two touchdowns in a hurry. That's what the Huskies need. And a timeout by Cal, and that's their last timeout of the game. Well, that'll be irritating to Keith Gilbertson because not just because it's the last one in the game, but it just stops the clock. The one thing you don't want to do is stop the clock. I mean, even with as poorly as they've played on offense, they've got a chance to win this football game. Keith Gilbertson hopes that the clock continues to run and his defense just doesn't give up a big play. And he's got one fine quarterback running his offense too. Well he knows if the defense doesn't give up big plays the Huskers are going to have to run four or five minutes off the clock. The Cal offense gets the ball back with four or five minutes to go. Game's over. Full safety's playing way back. Second and ten trying to set up the screen to Kaufman. Trying to spread out the field. Trying to find a block. Nothing doing. Extremely well defended by California. I mean people were going every which way and California still sniffed out the ball and stopped Kaufman. Well the attempt to get the ball to Napoleon Kaufman that time in open field you can see lots of people Joshua Moore included coming to Damon Hewitt which is what you like to see on a, when you have a screen pass call but Napoleon Kaufman continues to look for room to run California defense continues to chase him down James Stallworth gets there in a hurry. Third down and ten. Eight and a half minutes to go. Here they come. Fumble. Cow ball. Dante DiPaolo with the tackle and Marshall Foran with the loose ball. Put this one in the record books.
Some disagreement over possession there. Frank Garcia arguing that the officials gave the ball to Cal too soon. Unlike the reversal of the Ernie Conwell fumble call earlier in the game, this one is not reversed. Damon Heward in a third and long situation knows he's, gonna, he's got to make something happen on this series. Tries to stay alive, perhaps stays alive too long. There you see the scramble. Tom Gallagher down along the bottom of that pile as well. Husky defense needs to make a big play. And that's putting it mildly. And Gilby knows it. And he's going to keep that ball on the ground just as much as he can. Well, the field, even a field goal here for Cal gives it, makes it a 16 point lead. Yeah. And two touchdown, two point conversions. It's still only a tie for Washington. Waving it off, first and 10. Rutherford back in the game, and it's all jammed up by Springstead and the rest of his teammates. Eight minutes to go. 23 10. Well, the decision here for Cal and Dave Barr and Keith Gilbertson is we continue to try to run the ball, run some clock, and let the best kicker in the conference try to get us three more points. There's Denny Schuler thinking hard in the glasses in the thinker pose. Or do we throw the ball and try to get a six and use the momentum? The Not much there on second down. The crowd wants him to throw it. The crowd also wants him to win the game. Five turnovers on Washington today. Hard to win games that way, plus the penalties. I think that's even six turnovers, isn't it? You have three interceptions, the Ernie Conwell yes, fumble, uh, the Damon's had two fumbles, three interceptions and two fumbles for Damon Heward, plus the Ernie Conwell okay, fumble. Well, we'll make it six. That's what our official statistician said was five, but I'll go with you. Anytime, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> They're down in 10. <laughs> Here comes Lawyer Malloy, and he gets it. Boy, that's amazing. Everybody saw it, and he still snapped the ball. The redshirt freshman out of Tacoma and Lincoln High School with a beautiful sack. A situation the there where Dave Barr would probably call timeout. You see he's got people moving on his offensive side too. He'd call timeout but they don't have any left. And Lauren <laughs> Malloy, look at that. He's stuck. There's nobody <laughs> even in the picture. The hole so big. So that puts Brian, Doug Brian, the kicker, back to the 32-yard line. So it's a 42-yard attempt. Big sack. He's had a big day. Three field goals already. He hit a 52 yarder earlier today. Plenty of foot. No good. Huskies with somewhat new life. 6.15 remaining. Timeout on the field. We'll be back. This program is authorized under the television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. 6.15 remaining, 13-point lead for the Golden Bears. And Damon Heward with a mountain to climb along with his 10 other teammates. We have not seen Eric Bjornsson at all today. This is the first game this season. He hasn't taken any snaps at quarterback. Seventy five yards away. And then they have to do it again. Deep right off the bat to Ron Hill intercepted by California. Artis Houston with the pick and everybody in the stadium knows that's what they've got to do and that's interception number four seven turnovers obviously you need to get on the scoreboard in a hurry but as you mentioned Don everybody knows you have to do that and the way to do it isn't necessarily in one play when everybody knows you do get the one on one coverage however and you're going to take advantage of it be it fourth quarter or first quarter 
Ball slightly underthrown. Artis Houston had great coverage step for step with Theron Hill. These DBs for California in a situation, hey, I'll give you 10 yards. Yeah. Go ahead and run as many outs as you want. I'm not going to let you get behind me. That's right. So Dave Barr has six minutes and seven seconds to kill. And he's got a 13 point lead. And let's see what happens. Huskies are saying they moved. Well, Keith Gilbertson knows firsthand that this Husky defense can Get make ball. big plays. Ball start on the offense. And score if you give them a chance to. So he says, I'm not going to beat myself. Here. He's on a bit of a roll. He'll be 6 and 0. Oh. It has been years and years and years since Cal's been doing that well. Cal 91 was 5 and 0 oh when Pulaski and company met the Huskies down here. Washington went on to win it. Clock down to nine seconds. And Edwards carries for short yardage. I can't believe people are actually booing in this stadium and they're about to upset Washington. Well, the big complaint. I can't uh, believe that the, the big complaint in the area is that they compare everything back to 91 and no matter what you do it's not good enough. Hey, they haven't had enough winning that's years in this, this well, stadium. And that's <laughs> what uh, a certain second year head coach from California will tell you in private. Yeah. Jeez Louise. <laughs> he tries to downplay the expectation say let let our kids just play and we'll try to be as good as we can. Caldwell. Lamar Lyons on the defense. Nice play. Still short, yeah, short of the first down. Doesn't get you enough, but it certainly enlarges your options. Caldwell, a nice little possession receiver, and I shouldn't say little. He's six-two, but he's he's just what you need for that the tough possession receiver. Well, he can get deep as well as Reggie Reeser certainly knows. With 200 pounds, you can take licks from linebackers like Hillary Butler. Mike Caldwell will say that was the perception of him was a possession receiver when he got here. Now he thinks he's proven himself as a deep threat as well. Over 100 yards today. Third and five. Benjamin and he is swarmed over by Hillary Butler and Josh Moore. So it'll be time to punt. Cal ran. And the clock continues. Excuse me Chuck but it continues to run. While they wait for the punting team to come out. It'll be about two minutes by the time the Huskies get the ball back. Just over six <laughs> minutes to go when this drive started. Jim Lambright congratulating Jamal Fontaine. Good series for the Husky defense. The defense has not played that badly today, holding this offense to 23 points on the road. It's been the offense that struggled. Seven turnovers and only 10 points for the day. You know those turnovers Ouch. hurt your defense as well as your offense. You better believe it. Good rush by lawyer Malloy. Vino is going to leave it alone. That is probably the best punt that Ryan Longwell could have hit under these circumstances. Yeah. Because you don't want Bino Bryant to get the ball. I'd rather have a 30 yard punt with no Bino than a 50 yarder that Bino gets a chance to catch and run with. So once again Damon Heward will come out. And. The young sophomore from Puyallup is taking a real tough lesson or two today. Four interceptions. Some of them because of the situations, but he won't forget this for a while. Well, the question is, can you learn from these experiences and make and use them to get better? Obviously, Huskies won't find out until next week. It's another tough road game going down to a talented if Resurgent. struggling. Yeah. yeah UCLA is a team that's always had great players and they're playing better this season. Losses like this we talk losses games like this don't do you any good if you don't learn from them. Well it's like Don James would say our pal up here in the booth now that's not with us today it's you got to get better you got to keep getting better every week. We have two programs right here that are both at crossroads in this season I don't think either team really believed how good they were or knew how good they were. I think that question is being answered two different ways depending on whether you're wearing blue or white. <laughs> There's uh, definitely right been are. forks in the road and one team is taking the high road and one team is taking the low road. 
First and 10 from the 24. Jim Novell wanting to huddle up again. The officials still standing over the ball, waiting about, for yeah. the official. And the Red Hat was out on the field, the Red waiting Hat. for a network commercial break to conclude. The Red Hat, of course, is the guy basically that runs this show. That's right. <laughs> The movement on Andrew Peterson of Washington, and that'll probably back it up five against the dogs. Another penalty on Washington. Dead ball, false start on the offense. That's six penalties on Washington for a total of 50 yards. Huskies in the shotgun that time. Sometimes difficult for the offensive lineman to hear signals. Well, Cal wins the penalty contest today, but they also are going to win the scoreboard contest, it looks like, anyway. 3.47 to go. Huskies need something big in a hurry. Pass to Bruner and gets out of bounds wisely at the 28-yard line. Artis Houston was defending the right corner. Stops the clock with 3.41 to go. They could score a quick touchdown. Go with an onside. Keep Artie's defense on the field. Who knows? At this juncture, you don't get the feeling that the potential's there. But maybe the Huskies will prove me wrong. Second and five. DJ McCarthy, no game. And doesn't get out of bounds. Why does DJ McCarthy go down? Instead of getting out of bounds to stop the clock as a senior. Ike Booth was there on defense, right? Third and four. James Stallworth with another sack. Four sacks for the day. See, Stallworth lines up in the down position and just flat out beats Pete Pearson to the outside. No fancy blitz. Just beats him. Timeout Washington. Fourth and nine with 3.06 to go, trailing by 13. Certainly don't fold your tent here. The look on Damon Heward's face is not one of. Much joy certainly and a lot of anguish at this point almost looks like he might have been hit after that on that sack. We'll be back. Fourth and nine. First down, Theron Hill, but goodness sakes, don't be cutting back. <laughs> the first down stops the clock until the ball is spotted and the chains are moved. Theron Hill with the reception on fourth and nine with 2.57 to go in the ball game. Yeah, almost tried to cut back around the defender and would have lost his first down had he been tackled. Ron Hill goes the other way and goes out of bounds. The clock is stopped and the Huskies can huddle. Good point. The clock says, clock to our left says there's two minutes and 97 seconds left. And I think Jim Lambright would rather <laughs> use that one. You can add those 40 seconds. 297 or 257. 257 on the at the other end. You can and see, welcome to today's game. Has, has been up there all day. It's a very friendly place. <laughs> and been welcoming us even after we've been here for six hours. Long ball game. Started back at 12:30, coming up at 4 o'clock here, 40 to 4. First and 10, 2:49. Got to get out of bounds, and does so. Nice job by Heward. But I'll tell you, you're seeing some shoving and pushing by 
both teams on the sidelines. Not a lot of love between these two. They're staying very, very physical. Jim Novell, the center, went out of bounds with his quarterback, and there were a few shoves in the back of Mr. Novell trying to come back on the field. And I don't think Gilby will stand for much of that, just as Jim Lambright wouldn't stand for it with his team. Second and four, 241 to go. Ball on the 42 yard line of Washington. Ooh, that's the break you were looking for right there. Find somebody in the secondary to make a mistake and get a quick TD. Yep, Artis Houston breaks forward on a ball that's thrown over his head, but Dave Janoski can't make the adjustment any quicker than Artis Houston can. See Damon Hewen breathing pretty deep. He's working hard just trying to stay alive. That's there. right. Yeah, he's not only trying to gain yardage and points, he's trying to avoid tacklers right now. Artie's right. sending everything but the kitchen sink. Actually, he's playing pretty conservatively as he should but those people are still getting in there his front four and he's got some great speed and James Stallworth yes the linebacker who was playing a pass rush position third and four pass good Theron Hill to the 40 first down with two and a half minutes to go clock does stop to 29 Joshua Moore was defending against Theron Hill that was one of the nicest passes we've seen today by Heward and the reception by Hill against Gilby. Theron Hill gets in the seam of that zone. First and ten. Fewer to the tight end. Gets his yardage and out of bounds is Mark Bruner down inside the 30 yard line. Obviously. Get Go ahead. Chuck. Obviously Cal playing a fairly soft on defense and the Huskies doing a good job of maximizing what they can get getting 10 12 yards at a clip protection there is this time there, this time is there for Damon Heward Cal paying no attention to Mark Bruner whatsoever Bruner does a good job of a getting the first and B getting out of bounds 213 remaining they need to strike Pater real fast like that DJ McCarthy Touchdown, Washington. Well, we said they needed to score quickly so they can go for an onside kick. And DJ McCarthy comes up with a tackle, or rather the touchdown, against Kevin Devine. His first touchdown, and I think his first in his career. Fifth-year senior, been in the program a long time, rewarded with a scholarship just a couple of weeks ago. Chance for the fans to break out the big W. From Artie Gigantino, all that pointing and posturing. I don't think that's what he had in mind. This is a big play here. And it's good. So that moves the lead to only six points. 23 17, 206 to go. Can you spell onside kick? <laughs> yeah, obviously we'll have the hands team ready to go. Jim Lambright. There's the man who was beaten. And his Divine. squad will try to get the ball back, undoubtedly. Here we go. Another look at it. You can see three step drop, one on one coverage. Ball very well thrown. Devine just doesn't make a play on the ball. DJ McCarthy cuts back underneath. Kind of curious as to why Mr. Devine is nowhere near this ball. When totally it comes misread down. it. Shades of Von Bryant two years ago against Stanford. Well, Remember that? As you said, Don, the hope for the Huskies right now is that a defensive back for California makes a mistake. There it is. DJ McCarthy in the Husky offense, the thankful recipient. And every Cal player coming onto the field to face the Huskies on this kickoff has a either a very low number yeah. or a very high number. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're Lots talking of, skilled players, we're talking folks. Talking five and eleven and thirty-three <laughs> and thirty-seven. One man deep. We're, we're talking. Cal. <laughs> yeah, only one man. That's Artis Houston, and everybody else is a running back or a receiver. And Jason Crabb will be the man trying to kick the perfect onside boot. 
What you try to do as the kicker in this situation is have the ball skip along the ground until it gets to about eight or nine yards and then pop up into the air and cross that 10 yard barrier, that 45 yard line. A it's rule change in college football this year, you cannot overload one side too dramatically. I don't know exactly what the rule is, but you used to see 10 men in a pile running to recover. Huskies, I'm sure, have maximum bodies over there, so the rule must be you've got to have five yeah. on one side. And they're ball carriers as well. Perfect got kick. what they wanted. Loose ball. Huskies have it. The Huskies have the football at the 48-yard line. Jason Crabb may have been the one who got it. No. Jason Crabb, the kicker with the perfect onside kick. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make sure to give him credit Might have been where Scott credit Greenlaw. is due. Scotty Greenlaw, number 12 at the bottom of the pile. Man who just got a scholarship awarded to him this fall, and by golly, he comes up with the onside. The next time you talk, start talking about scholarship limits, let's talk about DJ McCarthy and Scotty Greenlaw, a perfect kick. Cal player has no choice but to try to go up and make the play. The loose ball, Scotty Greenlaw falls on it. Two minutes, two seconds, Huskies trail by six. They have the ball on the California 48-yard line. Once again, you can see all you're trying to do on an outside kick is make a mess. And they did a perfect job of it that time. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. Good protection. They go to the tight end. Mark Bruner out of bounds down near the 41-yard line with a minute 58 to go in the contest. What you're faced with also now is a Cal defense that has been on its heels for the last two or three series playing soft prevent right. type defense. All of a sudden they're in a situation where they've got to play real football. Second down and three a gain of seven for the Huskies. Joe Crawley comes out Theron Hill in. Napoleon Kaufman is the tailback. Second and three. Incomplete. Theron Hill, the intended receiver, and Ike Booth there to defend. Well thrown football, well covered by Ike Booth. Theron Hill once again just not coming back to the ball quite enough to get back far enough to make the play. Six seconds sticked away on that play. I can tell because it says a minute 92 on the left and a minute 52 on the right. <laughs> Depending on the end of the stadium they look at. Got to hand it to the Huskies. They're staying alive. Jeff Woodruff, Dick Baird, trying to come up with something to get the Huskies in the end zone one more time. Looks like single coverage. Kaufman need to take a timeout. There we go. That was third down and three. Try to change things up a little bit with the quick draw. Good little call. It just got jammed up inside. Gerard, Jared Eric Willard, Willard is the one, man who did it. One reason it will get jammed up. You see also Ferran coming in from the outside to make sure Napoleon can't cut it outside. But when you've got a player like Willard, the leading tackler in the Pac-10 last year, third down and three, and he goes unblocked. Somebody Big didn't mistake. get their hat on the right guy. Talk about big plays, fourth down and four. Fourth down and four. This is it. First down, crawl it. Do they call timeout? Well, they'll stop the clock certainly to move the chains. Stop the clock to move the chains. They will start back up. Joe Crawlick hit the ground before he went out of bounds. Ball is at the 32 yard line, 33 yard line. The Huskies will get on the ball. A lot of time, Chuck. It really is quite a bit of time. A minute 39 plus a timeout. A minute 39 when they've only got 32 yards is time. Go to your senior receivers like Crawlick. First and 10. He's looking that way right now. And your tight end, Bruner. Back to Bruner, out of bounds. Clock is stopped again, a minute 35. And the ball is down to the 27 yard line of California. California. Knocked out of bounds fan. by Joshua Moore. We've said it before. California fans have seen this. So many times against the Huskies, 79 and 81. Big comeback in 88 by Washington to come from behind. You were there too, buddy. Second down and five with a minute 35 to go. Ball on the 27 yard line. 
Two receivers to the left side. McCarthy down to the 21. Very close to the first down. Clock is stopped. California player injured as well, which will also stop the clock. Now he's getting up. Clock is stopped for the first down once again. DJ McCarthy making some big plays here. Minute Damon. 29 to go, Chuck. And let's give some credit to Damon Hewitt. He is making some great throws in these yes. last three, four minutes. Woodruff's calling some great plays, too. Wide open, Matt Jones out of bounds at the eight-yard line, seven-yard line. First and goal for the Huskies. And the far corner of the stadium is going nuts. Brings up an interesting point. That is where the Husky fans are, right in that corner where Matt Jones runs out of bounds. From a crowd noise perspective, that might help later. Matt Jones is completely left alone. A miscue in the California defensive backfield. Jerry Willard not able to get out there in his coverage zone in time. Matt Jones does a good job of picking up yards and getting out of bounds. Replaced by Richard Thomas right now. First and goal from the seven and Washington has a timeout remaining. Joe Krolik wide to the right. Looks like single coverage. On the ground Kaufman brought down. Still plenty of time. They may not even call. Yes they do call the timeout. So they take the last one now as Dante DiPaolo read it beautifully and came up to make the stop. Look at that in the second half 100 yards more. And He's Adam, a fighter. I'm very impressed. I didn't see any fight in these guys at that one point and I am very impressed. You add up those passing yards and it's Damon Hewitt's best day as a Husky. Second and seven. Got to get away. Bruder. Touchdown Washington. Unbelievable. This is the team that came back from 30 to nothing against Oregon to win 42 41. Washington coming back with a minute four to go to tie the game at 23. And there are over three, four, five, maybe 10,000 Husky fans in the far corner who can't believe it as well. Here it is, Travis Hansen with the extra point attempt. Yortson holding. It is good. One of the finest comebacks I've seen in years. And Mr. Nelson, you can drop that egg on my face anytime. I will do so in one <laughs> minute and four seconds. <laughs> I can't about believe it. it. Let's talk again. About a California offense that did come from 30 points down last week. Yes. Has have, some great they, big play players in Simeon. Here's the touchdown. Caldwell. Husky some players of their own. Watch this throw. Is that a perfect throw? And a good catch by Mark Bruner. Bruner. You teach a player to catch the ball with his hands, not his body. Mark Bruner extends his arms. Three-step drop, turn and throw. You don't think he knew he was going to Mark Bruner when he was standing under center, <laughs> do you? Perfect throw, perfect oh catch. My. Shut my mouth. And you've got some guys for the California Golden Bears with a minute and four seconds. No timeouts left for yeah. California. No timeout. That can make some things happen as well. Look at Ewart's numbers now 22 of 35, 237 yards, two touchdowns. Of course, those coming in the second half. When you talk about a decision that probably wasn't made. Jim Lambright staying with Damon Heward, not putting in Eric Bjornsson to play. That decision certainly. What do you do here justified. Chuck with Gilby he wants to get a good return you're going to squib it. One of the things that Jason Crabb is very good at is hanging the ball up in the air for a long time. If that ball gets on Not the ground one. that's the one thing you don't want to do. Benjamin. 
looks for the seam and gets up to the 32 yard line and a minute check that 58 seconds to go in this ball game and you've got one of the finest quarterbacks in the Pac-10 to run it as Damon Hewer did his job for Washington Dave Barr has a shot with California 58 seconds to go Washington and remember you've got a great field goal kicker in California with Doug Bryan who already hit a 52 yarder so there is still a long ways to go good field position to start a drive California's yes. 31 yard line plenty of time out of bounds is Simeon and they're going to do exactly what Washington just got done doing. Uh, California may have started this drive at their own 31 but they're basically playing right now on about a 35 or 40 yard field. They're not trying to get the ball in the end zone. Right. They don't have 69 yards to go. They're trying to get the ball inside Washington's 35 30 yard line. Give Doug Bryan a chance. He has already hit from 52 today as I said. Second down. Got to get pressure. Cuts made by Benjamin and has the first down. Up to the 46 yard line. And what do you do if you're Jim Lambright defensive coordinator right now as well. How soft do you play. Do you play zone. Do you rush a lot of people. That, that double edged swords get sharper on both sides all the time. Demetrius Devers on the stop at his first and ten ball now on the 46 of California. Again the down and out as ex as expected. Ways okay with the reception. Reggie Reese are there defending. And now they are into Washington territory. California has gained 21 yards in 23 seconds. Doug Bryan just wants to get a chance. You see, he has two misses today. Misses from 23, or excuse me, from 37, being one of the two. Second down and three. Never a bigger one in his life. Not only yardage, but it also makes those receivers have farther to come back to the ball to line up. Clock continuing to run 22 21. Huskies have to make sure they've got 11 players on the field, not too many. Simeon complete, but the clock continues to roll down to 12 seconds. 11. They're still beyond field goal range. No timeouts. Seven, six seconds. Can't get one more play set up. One second. No time on the no clock. No time on that clock. There will be a discussion by the officials whether or not the clock has expired. Not over yet. There is a flag on the play. More than likely, if I'm California, I'm going to snap the ball even before the clock stops. There you go. Two seconds left on the clock. Except the clock cannot stop on an offensive penalty. How can the clock stop on an offensive penalty? The illegal snap. But that's what I'm going to do on purpose. They're going to let Doug Bryan try a 60 plus yarder right here. Might as well. He's got a lot of leg. Just trying to find his career high, but it doesn't matter if he's going to try from that far away. It'll be a 60. Well, after the Wait a minute, they got to back See, up. After even they more. walk the penalty off, you're going to have to figure this one out. It's beyond my uh, table, <laughs> my math table. Goes off the grid. 60, 70, 72 yards. Oh, it's going to be a 69 yarder. 69, one inside the 40. Okay. Actually, he's going to 68. He's going to cheat it up a yard. If he goes from 68, he's going to be a yard short. The snap's only going to be a six-yard snap. He's got the leg. He kicks off from the 35 and can put it into the end zone. Well, he's got another 15 yards. He's only right back. There. He's only back. Game's over. What's going on here? My goodness. The clock starts. The clock starts on the put down of the ball, oh, that's not right. the snap. The game is over. And the Huskies, with a comeback of their own, which is absolutely sensational. Keith Gilbertson, we led 23 to three, and somehow Jim Lambright. And the dogs come back. You'll be looking for Jim Lambright. Two old friends spent a lot of time hanging out around. Two childhood the, friends the too. The Lake area talking football. A lot you of love like, between these guys. You huh? like to come back and win a game. You hate to see a friend. He's looking to, for Jim. Have to go through that. There he is. Dear old friends. 
They brought Washington a national championship with Don James. And Gilby, you're going to have great years. I tell you, you talk about emotional swings in Memorial Stadium over the last two weekends. Come from 30 points behind to beat Oregon, 20 points ahead, and lose a game to Washington. Gilby's loved by both teams in this case. We'll wrap things up in just a moment. A shocking day, incredible win for Washington. Still pretty wild here at Memorial Stadium as the band comes across the field. Cal's band, that is. I think all the Husky fans are still up in the corner of the stadium celebrating. And uh, Chuck Nelson has already wiped the egg all over my face, one who thought this one was over in the third quarter. The hash browns are cooking, Don. That's right. But Damon Heward, with an incredible second half, came back. You made a good point just a moment ago during the break. Well, we were talking earlier in the fourth quarter about how Damon Heward is going to have to use this game the mistakes he made in this game and get better next week against UCLA. Boy, that learning curve was accelerated. He <laughs> used him in the fourth quarter here today. <laughs> if there was a turning point, I think there was 217 left in the ball game, and we said they got to score quickly. And boom, DJ McCarthy on the long uh, reception from Damon Hewitt for the touchdown. And then they go for the onside. Jason Crabb deserves a lot of credit. Scott Greenlaw for recovering that onside kick. And then it was uh, a matter of chipping away and then they scored a Bruner for the touchdown. Well there's so many things that go into coming back like that. You've got a defense that suddenly goes soft and starts giving up you know eight ten yards in a play because that's kind of what that does, those defensives are designed to do in that time of the game make the team use up a lot of clock. The onside kick obviously gave the Huskies the extra opportunity. Damon Hewitt and that Husky offense did exactly what they needed to do when they needed to do it. And don't forget Andy Mason's sack on the final drive for California, which knocked the Bears out of field goal range, or certainly knocked the Bears out of better field goal position or field position to get in closer for Doug Bryan, the kicker. Anyway, make mine scramble as Aegon Poyer's face, it is over. Washington comes back to win it in Jim Lambright's greatest victory yet as head coach, 24 23 over California. Once again, the final score here at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. Washington coming back, trailing 23 to 3, comes back for a 24 23 victory over the Golden Bears. For Chuck Nelson, I'm Don Foyer. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody.